this session from across the globe and a sincere thanks to the press reporters and media personnel to all the supporters and organizers of this thought provoking lecture that encourages us to think global and act local we are glad to see that there are some eminent personalities and dignitaries who have joined us at this venue amongst the audience uh, who have taken time out uh, from their busy schedules to attend this lecture a warm welcome to uh, professor uh, shankar chatterjee and i rd mr b b subarao and shri papa rao then uh, we are also glad we are also delighted to have sarpanches from few gram panchayats who have who are attending this session and this particular lecture has uh, uh, is of very much importance to them so i heartily welcome them praja swamyanlo vikendrikarana ane amsham pai palu vishayalu peddala degara telusukodaniki vachila palu gramala sarpanchulaku vaari anucharulaku hrudayapurvakanga abhinandisthunnam mimmalni ee karyakramaniki swagatisthunnam so uh, this program on uh, this lecture session on uh, democracy and decentralization is being organized by s jaypal reddy foundation ladies and gentlemen we all know sri jaypal reddy was a charismatic and dynamic personality he was widely regarded as a political stalwart for his democratic principles and secular outlook in his political career spanning 50 years he was elected five times to the lok sabha served four terms as an mla and nominated twice as member of rajya sabha all through his life he was an ardent proponent of representative form of government and dedicated his life for uploading uh, upholding democratic values this lecture is uh, organized in his fond memory and a tribute to his democratic values he also authored the book 10 ideologies the great asymmetry between agrarianism and industrialism which expounds on 10 major ideologies that helped in shaping the world this as you all know any discussion or discourse on democracy attracts a great interest from one and all democracy is always work in progress after all it deals with our lives and how we organize our societies a key ingredient of democracy is federal form of governance federalism or decentralization remains a cornerstone of democracy particularly for nations having large land area and with vast ethnic ideological and linguistic diversities india ticks all the boxes federalism or decentralization uh there are certain crucial features that were enshrined in the indian constitution by the founding fathers of the nation and there is more to accomplish owing to changing socio political environment in the country however the society is as always divided in opinions with regards to power sharing mechanisms and arrangements between the center and regional governments some fear that too much federalism shall diffuse power to an extent that the nation may disintegrate other sopai in that federalism will strengthen at grassroots level and empower them to obtain government services with ease and without any adverse impact on their regional identities what then is the best format for indian polity what are the limits of devolution of powers and what are its implications benefits and long term outlook what are the current trends and many more questions arise in this context there is a lot to know about this topic from our eminent experts hence i take the pleasure in inviting eminent speakers of the day onto the dais to enlighten us on the topic of the evening democracy and decentralization we are extremely fortunate to have shri manishankar ayer as chief guest of today's program to share his expert views on the topic of the day it is my honor sir to invite you onto the dais ladies and gentlemen a thundering applause to mr manishankar ayer former union minister for government of india we also have with us as guest speaker mr mohan guruswami a prolific writer head of center for policy alternatives distinguished fellow at the observer research foundation and author of several books ladies and gentlemen please please join me in inviting shri mohan guruswami sir to the dais it is an honor to have amongst us professor k purushottam reddy an eminent environmentalist political scientist and development activist i cordially invite professor reddy to the dais they are all please welcome professor k purushottam reddy with a big applause
We have three towering personalities here who grace the dais, waiting to share their knowledge and wisdom on the topic of the day, democracy and decentralization. It is our duty to express our gratitude to them for accepting our invitation to be our guest speakers. There is something pure and heartfelt and emotional and genuine about a bouquet of flowers. It always helps in expressing gratitude. So I request Mr. Manohar Reddy to offer a bouquet to Sri Manishankar Ayer. Sorry, there is a correction. I request Ms. Leela Lakshma Reddy to offer a bouquet to Sri Manishankar Ayer. Ms. Leela Lakshma Reddy shall offer a bouquet to Sri Mohan Guru Swami sir. And a bouquet to Professor K. Purushottam Reddy. On this note, it is time to continue with the program. Though they do not need special introduction, it's my pleasure to say a few words about our distinguished speakers before inviting them to the podium. Our first guest speaker, Professor K. Purushottam Reddy. Professor Reddy is a contemporary and a good friend of Sri late S. Jaipal Reddy. He is an eminent environmentalist, political scientist and developmental activist. He received MA, MPhil and PhD in political science from Usmania University. His PhD thesis is titled Environmental Policy and Education, an investigative analysis of eco-degradation of Patancharu in Andhra Pradesh. He held several posts as an academician, as professor, head of department and chairman of board of studies in the political science department. He was director for Center for Environmental Studies at Usmania University. He is a resource person for many universities and their academic staff colleges in the state. MCHRD, AP Judicial Academy, MIT School of Government, Pune, ESCI and Center for Cultural Resource Training as India's most eminent environmentalist. A true Gandhian in spirit with zero tolerance towards elements that disrupt social harmony and cause oppressions. He calls the society as his lab and dedicated his life for the cause of society and environment. So I cordially invite Professor K. Purushottam Reddy to the podium. Respected Chief Guest, uh, Chief Guest. Sri Manishankar Ayurvaru, our distinguished guest, Sri Mohan Kuruswami Garu, distinguished invitees, members of the family of Jaipal Reddy Garu. In fact, it is my privilege to be able to stand here because I, am, I have been associated with Jaipal Reddy Garu. He was my senior in the college. And together we were products of our time. And those times, believe me friends, the system was open where the mind was free and without fear. In the, in the words of Ravindranath Tagore, we had absolute freedom. We could invite any person, we could listen to their speeches, we, could, we would have uh, tremendous interaction. So there were no restrictions from the street side. And that was the time when we heard the who is who of India, right from Nehruji and, you know, Dr. Ramana Loya, Vajpayee, you know, you, you name it and I can tell. Even Supreme Court judges, Justice Gajendra Gadkar. So Jaipal Reddy being a product, a witness to those, those times, he was elected many times in the college. He became the OUSU president. Entire Osman University had one student's union and uh, elected members from all the colleges would vote. So that was the time when there was freedom, when, you know, we, we were all products of... I, I'm not saying that we participated in the freedom struggle, but definitely we were the first beneficiaries of the excellent leadership which emerged after independence. I do not wish to take much time, <coughs> but it's very important that I recall my teacher, Professor Shivaya Garu, because the topic is Panchayat Raj, and Professor Shivaya, who was in Osmani University, subsequently joined 
subsequently joined NIRD. He was heading the political science division of NIRD. It so happened that Rajiv Gandhi visited as Prime Minister NIRD <coughs> and in his speech, you know, something which became very famous, he talked about the journey of a rupee. And a Delhi Ninchi Oka Rupai Bail Derindi. Kani Gram Panchayat Koya Sarki than value Padian Pai and the Padian Pai Salaku at a Thargudu way. So Madhyana Yover Gotation Rienkata, that's a uh, very that's a separate story. But I wish to point out that there is a book in political science written by Harold Lossville. <coughs> And the name of the book is Politics is Who Gets What, When and How. The remaining I leave it for your imagination. So when the Prime Minister visited NIRT, he expressed his anguish. Then NIRT Director General uh, suggested Professor Shivaya's name and the Prime Minister and my teacher, they had a long conversation. And the task of drafting the Panchayat Raj bill, uh, which subsequently became 73rd and 74th, you know, that was entrusted to Professor Shivaya Garu. And uh, it is because of his immense contribution. Believe me, he was a great intellectual without even one degree of selfishness. He sacrificed his life for the growth of the knowledge. So because of that attitude, this wonderful legislation came into being. But during Rajiv Gandhi's time, <coughs> when it was introduced, it was known as the 64th and 65th am Amendment. But uh, unfortunately, then the Rajiv Gandhi did not have the majority in the Rajya Sabha, and therefore it could not be adopted. Subsequently, uh, two other Prime Ministers, but during P. V. Narasimharao's time, he was able to garner the requisite majority and uh, that particular bill was adopted under the, it's known as the 73rd and 74th Amendment. I'm not going into the small little details, but I wish to point out what is the status. Today, definitely, the local governments enjoy what we call constitutional protection. <coughs> to that extent, it is fine. But unfortunately, certain things have gone wrong in this country. The election commission, which is supposed to be autonomous, the state election commission, the state finance commission, in many a state, they tow the policy of the state government, which is unfortunate. As a result, what is happening? The local panchayats, the panch particularly you, you take it in even urban government because myself and Subaraji <coughs> during the COVID time, sir, we organized a hundred uh, webinars on the very many issues faced by Hyderabad and others similar urban areas in the country. I just wish to point out certain things which need to be rectified because we are very fortunate to have our distinguished chief guest, who is an authority on this subject. And we have in this hall, Professor Shankar Chatterjee, uh, who is still uh, recently retired from NIRD, but he is an authority unto himself. So the first point is, in spite of the constitutional status, local governments, that is panchayats and, and municipalities, they lack effective devolution of powers and functions from the state government. This is a general complaint throughout the country. It's not specific to our state. Second point is, at the district level and also at the, at the uh, capital, state capital level, when it comes to the city, we have certain parallel institutions. For example, the District uh, Health Society, District Rural Development Authority, DRDA, and District Water and Sanitation, etc. So they decide everything. In fact, 
the purpose of panchayats was to facilitate, you know, in this country, at the grassroots level, a system of governance where direct democracy can manifest. Believe me, friends, I have visited many gram panchayats, and today we have quite a few sarpanches. I had the opportunity to participate in the grama sabhas, and believe me, nobody takes cognizance of what they decide. It is only over naam ke vaste. I'll, I'll go into the details subsequently. Then the subjects mentioned, that is, that the subjects which have been transferred to panchayats and also municipalities or municipal corporations, they are just illustrative. It's not a comprehensive list. But unfortunately what, what is happening is that the, these local governments are told that it is comprehensive. And there is no proper training. As a result, the local governments are not asserting Actually, if only they are told, that, particularly the concept of the doctrine of implied powers, to implement one power, you can, you can go on uh, increasing the powers connected with it. Doctrine of implied powers, which is the, the doctrine which saved America. Anyway, we don't have Chief Justice Marshall type in this country, and uh, we are paying a very heavy price. And even there is no proper leadership that is being trained at the panchayat level. As a result, they are feeling depressed. Telula epal nante, valleman kuntra nante, me me inja samsar. Nante, oka vidama ina depression, helplessness. And that is destroying the entire system. I come to the next one. We have at the national level NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority. But at the state level, on paper also, we have SDMA. And again, whenever I say state, it is not this state. I am talking about the states in the country. State Disaster Management Authority, it should be allowed to, you know, to work very effectively. For that, it should be given finances personnel and other facilities and it should it should uh, be working with the precautionary principle because disasters need to be prevented there, there is very little that we can do once it manifests except for certain kinds of disasters then we come to small little things which can be done tomorrow for example where is the need to give this local area development funds to MLAs and MPs Local area development funds, they can be directly transferred to the local governments. Madhyana Villa Pedarikamendi. Are we not trusting the wisdom of the people living, uh, in the local government? The Krama Sabha is ultimate. So that is that can be done anytime. Sir, as all of you, all of us know, all the powers in this country are divided into at the national level, central list, state list, and concurrent list. But then the power of local government, the power to manage local government, is vested with the state government. Now why can't we trust the local governments? Why Madhyana state government Pedarikam Induku? Sarpanchlan Namalema. Can't we trust the mayors? After all, just as we trust the central government, state government, we the people also trust, it is our own will. Please remember, it is we the people. When we vote for a national election, by virtue of her vote, somebody becomes, some party becomes a ruling and someone becomes a prime minister. Same thing happens at the state level. Anyway, uh, I request everyone to ponder on this. And lastly, I have seen so many Gram Panchayats particularly when their meetings are going on, suddenly we notice one MLA comes, the constituency MLA. And believe me, there is so much of ruckus. Everybody leaves everything and their focus is on attending the MLA. This is very bad. Rule of law should be there. 
I don't understand the logic of MLA and MP attending local governments. This has to be rectified or let there be a, a big discussion. So, one last point. As I mentioned about the central list, state list and concurrent, originally India's uh, state list had 66 powers. During the emergency, thanks to Mrs. Indira Gandhi, because when, when she imposed the emergency, definitely we all opposed it. But when Madam Gandhi did certain good things, definitely one should have the courage to appreciate. She has taken out from the state list five powers and added to the concurrent list. These are education, forests, protection of wild animals, <coughs> administration of justice, weights and measures. I, I propose in this uh, distinguished gathering that we should consider shifting the, the power that is there in number 5, entry 5, that is local government, that should be, you consider, I am not saying, uh, I am nobody to say that it should happen, but definitely that can be considered as a big remedy or, you know, it, it can be described as a corrective mechanism and I am I'm, I'm looking forward to our chief guest who is an authority on this, you know, he has done tremendous work. Thank you, sir, for coming to Hyderabad because, you know, we who have been living here, for us, Delhi to bahut dur hai. But thanks to modern ways of communication and you being so accessible, almost the entire group that came to your house to invite us, they are here in the hall, sir. And uh, thanks for coming. We look, we look forward for your guidance. And because this is needed for the, in the interest of India, in the interest of democracy, and we need to restore the confidence of the people because on paper they have powers, but in reality, no. In, in Telangana, like in other states, ordinary collector, how dare he, uh, he suspend a people selected Gram Panchayat? And for, on flimsy grounds, can the chief secretary suspend just like that? The, the state government, public opinion is public opinion. They can't, it can't be taken for granted. So I thank uh, the foundation, the FLDR foundation for uh, inviting me and giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. with all the uh, effort and antecedents of uh, the Panchayat Raj uh, uh, and the local government's amendments that have happened in Constitution of India. So thank you very much. Our next speaker of the day is uh, Mr. Mohan Guruswami, sir. Mr. Mohan Guruswami is a well-known astute analytical expertise on multiple subjects and uh, he is known for his wit and oratory skills. I watch some of his uh, talks on TEDx and uh, he mixes a uh, fair amount of humor with a lot of information. He has a vibrant career path that included teaching, senior management, journalism, and he has been an advisor to the Finance Ministry, Government of India, which has a rank of uh, Secretary to the Government of India. He was actually a product of Nizam College, Hyderabad, where he did his graduation and went on to acquire post-graduation in public policy, international affairs and management. An alumnus of J.F. Kennedy School, Harvard University, Graduate School of Business, Stanford University. He is a frequent commentator on national and international media on matters of current interest. His papers on redefining poverty, income inequality, backwardness of Bihar, economic development in West Bengal, FDI in retail have been published in well-regarded journals. 
Mr. Guruswami has been an avid traveler and author of several books. His recent books are The Looming Crisis in India's Agriculture, Issues in Development, India's World, Essays in Foreign Policy and Security Issues, India-China Relations, The Border Issue and Beyond, the latest being Chasing the Dragon, Will India Catch Up with China? So on this note, I cordially welcome Sri Guru Swami sir to deliver his speech. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Jaipal Reddy. Thank you, uh, Lakshma Reddy and uh, Arvind for inviting me here. And for the first time, I've been invited, welcomed as a guest in my own house, so which is a unique experience. Uh, one of the people behind this center, the idea was Jepal himself. We were very good friends. And uh, so Jepal said, you building this big building, what are you going to do with it? So I said, at least 5,000 feet, I'm going to make available for an adda for people to come meet and discuss for events like this. And we've had many events like this till the panic, pandemic panic hit us and for and this was just opening after that uh, two and a half years. So it's nice to start with a function in honor of my friend and on a subject which was very dear to him. The basic lesson in public administration is the nature of the regime determines the outcome. You might talk of democracy, you might talk of so many things, but how that regime is, what it actually is, determines the outcome. Now, I wrote my last book on comparison of China and India, and in 1950, China's public administration expenditures, the cost of government, was almost 73% at the center and 27% at the provinces and, and lower level. Highly centralized state. Communist party is very high. So that's why they used to have that kind of a regime. If you have a decentralized government, then everybody will speak. If you have a centralized regime, only one person will speak. And India at that time, in 1950, was 42% central government. For, no, sorry, 47% central government, 42% state government, and 11% to local government. So you had this system, I thought to myself, that you have 47 centre, 42 state, and 11 at local level. So you've got nine fellows who will tell you what to do, and one person who will do something for you in government. That's a simple analysis of that. Then I studied the same situation in 1950. By then the Chinese had shifted from 70 centre, they became 27 centre and everything had gone down. And they took all the big public sector companies and all that and gave it to the provinces and said, do what you want with it. You want to sell it, sell it. But we are not going to give any money. We will only look after defense and telecommunications and these things. But in India what happened? After all these talk of decentralization, Panchayati Raj, SK Day, block development, all that, 47 became 42. And 40. Two became 47. Eleven remained as it is. So at the bottom level, there is nobody. So I wrote a paper a few years ago after a big trip across the country. because I love traveling because I get out of the city. Uh, so I noticed that there is no government outside the highway. You leave the highway, go five kilometers this side, there is no, no government. Because... All the drains are filled with plastic, all the ponds are filled with plastic, all the sewage is in the village, because there is nobody responsible. We had a traditional system where people by caste did their work, but we said, no, no, this is not the way we are going to do it. We will have a new system of government, and nothing happened. Nothing works in a, there is no government. At best, the representative of government is a school teacher. He is the highest ranking fellow. Next is probably the forest guard or the clerk in the tehsil office. Because if you go to a village, particularly in central India, north India, the only pakka houses belong to the government employees. So the tehsil clerk or the forest guard or the 
police constable, over. They have paka houses. Everybody else lives in thatched houses or in tiled houses. So that tells you who has getting the money in the village. So the result is that today if you want a drain to be cleaned, you don't know where to go. You don't know who to ask. Because the fellow who used to do it traditionally because of his birth, he is not doing it anymore. He says, I am equal to you, why don't you do it? If Dora says, when Saaf say enter, Dora enter, no Saaf say Babu, in the Samastal, no Saaf say Babu, no Saaf say So, that is the system. We come to a complete breakdown. And uh, cost of government has gone up in turn. One of the reasons why is that we are short of, you know, about 300 policemen to every thousand sanctioned. This is down the line, nurses, teachers, because salaries are very high now. A police constable gets 30,000 rupees or 40,000 rupees. Um, a clerk gets that much. School teacher gets that much. So the government doesn't have money to appoint more people. So they do contract labor. So a contract labor fellow will get 6,000 rupees to teach in a school. And the permanent employee will get 30,000 rupees. And the schools are not employed. Primary health centers don't have doctors because government has no money. But in spite of that, the total cost of government, how much of money we pay for government, is 11.4% of GDP. And if you add pensions and all those benefits, it becomes 12.5% of GDP. Then we have, you know, all our other commitments. So, biggest expenditure in government is salaries of government, public administration. Uh, but are you getting any return for it? Because if you go to a village, it is the social structure is appended. The government employee is the tallest fellow. You know, and the so he's not going to listen to anybody. So every time I go to a school or you know, village and I ask where is the teacher, they say Dora was Ral And I went to a panchayat, I spent a few days in a panchayat in Madhya Pradesh in Betul. And the Sarpanch, the lady elected as the Gram Pradhan, she would come she came to the morning office, opened the office, then put the stove, made some tea. Then the secretary of the panchayat, the fellow lives in the district headquarters, 40 kilometers away. He comes and he says, I chai banai kya? So that fellow is supposed to keep notes or records and all, but he is outranking her because he's got a motorbike, he's English speaking, he's a government employee. So the I is making tea. I was sitting and watching. Then he said to Lejar lao, kitna anaj hai, how much of rice is there, how much of wheat is there. So then she said, barabar isab kare, then he went off. So government has effectively not transferred to people. Um, so I said that something has to be done. One of the things the state government has done in its own way in this state is to have smaller districts, smaller collectorates and then smaller mandals, etc. Et so you are taking government down to people. But yet you are still stuck with the problem of not having people to work for you. Even in a city, if your tap goes, who will you go to? Or your electric bulb outside the street is not working. By the time you call the fellow, it's taking four or five days. So there's nobody doing any work. And this cost of government is very high. So uh, nine people doing nothing. So when Rajiv Gandhi said 85% doesn't go down, this is what he meant. Not corruption. There are too many fellows in between doing nothing. Corruption actually is not so big as we make out. Corruption in India is all small corruption, you know, panch rupees, das rupees, nothing, uh, you know, cup of tea. But if you want to see corruption, you must go to China. Everybody is corrupt. All the Politburo members have properties in America. All of them. Most of them are billionaires. Indian corruption, you know, till Rafale and things started happening. It is very small. So I don't think we should be, we are hung up on corruption, but we should be looking at reforming government. Reform is decentralization, empowering people. I don't know why a school in a village should be run by the director of education sitting in Hyderabad, or the director of medical ex, uh, services is running a clinic somewhere else in, in Adilabad. 
The people of Adilabad, we should have, in the old days, we used to have district medical boards, district education. They've all gone, all become licensed centers. So when I was in government, one day I was asked by the uh, then Home Minister to write a paper on decentralization. Because every government which comes says decentralized Karnataka. They, they understand the problem. So I made a presentation and all that. And all the chief ministers were invited. So chief minister of Gujarat, who was Keshu Bhai Patel, he heard carefully and he said, ye swap karenge to hamare paas kon aega? So that is the basic question which Mani and his friends have to address. Ki the minute government is decentralized, tumara dukan ban. So, so this is a problem. So the only way you can sort it out, I think, is bring them all down. And we need to get restructure government. And Man- Manmohan Singh said, I will reform government. How can you reform government? How can you destroy the system which put you there? So I think we've gone far. So either the system has to break down, or the country has to break down, or the entire system. So something has to be done. But something will happen. You can't continue like this forever. Sooner or later something will happen and people of India have got a lot of life, a lot of strength. And once they are up, they are up. Thank you very much. guest who is the eminent um, uh, personality, Sri Marishankar Ayer sir. He is an iconic figure in political circles, a former diplomat who after a distinguished career in foreign service became a senior leader in the Indian National Congress. He was four times member of parliament, thrice to Lok Sabha from Maila Dutarai constituency, this is in Tamil Nadu and was nominated once for the Rajya Sabha. He joined the Indian Foreign Service and served as the Joint Secretary to Government of India in Ministry of, uh, and later he served, he headed Ministry of External Affairs and later at Prime Minister's Office. He attended Doon School where he took the role of student editor to the Doon School Weekly. This is where he met late Prime Minister Sri Rajiv Gandhi and they remained very close associates. Later he did his graduation in economics from Delhi University, followed up by Bachelor of Arts in Economics from Cambridge University. He joined the cabinet of Dr. Manmohan Singh led UPA government where he was the head of Panchayat Raj. Sri Manishankar Iyer also held the portfolios for ministries of petroleum and natural gas, youth affairs in sports and development of northeastern regions. In 2006, he was honored as the year's outstanding parliamentarian by the President of India. During his long tenure of public service, Mr. Iyer developed a reputation for being an avid orator, a prolific newspaper and journal columnist, and an authority on South Asian politics. He has written several books, few of them dedicated to our late Prime Minister, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. He has always been an advocate of grassroots democracy and pressed for representative form of government as he always carried a clear understanding about the process of devolution of power. So I cordially invite respected Chief Guest Sir, Sri Manishankar Iyer to deliver his lecture. Welcome Sir. My fellow speakers, Sri Mohan Guruswami Garu and Professor Purushottam Reddy Garu, I would particularly like to note the presence of several uh, sarpanches from our panchayats who are among us and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, f- I feel uncomfortable speaking to you in English. So, with everybody's permission, I'll mix some sentences in English with some sentences in Hindi so that I hope I can get through to the most important segment of this, of this audience, which I think are the Sarpanches 
who have taken the trouble to come from their respective villages here to this meeting. Mahatma Gandhi ne chaha tha ki panchayat raj hamare jamhuriyat ka buniyad bane. Aur Dr. Ambedkar ne kaha ki ye kaise ho sakta hai हमारे गांव में तो रद्दड़ है कुछ भी नहीं है लोग एक दूसरे को पीड़ित करते हैं जो ऊंचे वर्ग के हैं जो ऊंचे जात के हैं वो अपनी तानाशाही चलाते हैं और इसलिए हमने कुछ कोशिश किया कि गांव में लोगों को सुपुर्द को सुपुर्दगी करके उनको सशक्त करें तो कैसे जिया जा सकता है इन शॉर्ट डॉक्टर अंबेडकर रिजेक्टेड द आइडिया दैट महात्मा गांधी हैड पुट फॉरवर्ड ऑफ मेकिंग पंचायती राज द बेसिस ऑफ आवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन द बेसिस ऑफ आवर डेमोक्रेसी ऑन द ग्राउंड दैट द विलेजेस ऑफ इंडिया सस्पेक्ट्स that they are socially oppressive that the higher castes will capture all power and they will use it in order to further oppress the dalits and that is why the constitution of india has only a small one line provision for panchayats in the directive principles of state policy which means it's not justiciable and it is there to be found in the constitution jabki mahatma gandhi ko bataya gaya ki masoda mein panchayat raj ka koi zikr hi nahi hai to unko hairiyat hui unhone kaha ki ye kaise ho sakta hai lekin unka dehant ek mahine ke andar ho gaya aur uske baad jabki dr rajendra prasad ne kaha ki aap panchayat raj ko le aaiye उनको बताया गया कि बहुत देर हो गया है और जबकि इस पर चर्चा होती है तो सही जगह पर कुछ न कुछ पंचायती राज के बारे में लिखा जाएगा तो यही है बुनियादी कारण कि हमारे संविधान में जो कुछ भी करने का है केंद्र में और जो कुछ भी करने का है राज्य में उसके लिए पूरा प्रावधान है लेकिन जो करना चाहिए नीचे जमीन पर माटी के स्तर पर वो नहीं होता है अनफॉर्चुनेटली बिकॉज द प्रोविजन फॉर पंचायती राज इज लिमिटेड टू अ सिंगल सेंटेंस इन इन द डिरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी व्हिच इज नॉट जस्टिसबल वी हैव अ सिचुएशन दैट वाइल द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हैज एंश्योर्ड that the center will have adequate powers and the state will have adequate powers there was nothing provided for at the lowest level this was left to the state governments to do and the most remarkable thing is the state governments did not do it if they had panchayats they would dissolve them if they didn't have panchayats they wouldn't create them sometimes panchayats would go on for 15 years at other times they'd be finished in 15 days to isko durust karne ke liye aur waqai tarakki ko nichle star tak le jane ke liye to ensure that development took place at the grassroots and that it was not confined to the center and state levels jawaharlal nehru after experimenting with the community development program which he found unsatisfactory because it was bureaucratic rather than democratic he came up with a suggestion a model panchayat raj act pandit ji ne socha ki isko durust karne ke liye jabki unko pata laga ki community development program जिसके जरिए ब्लॉक डेवलपमेंट ऑफिसर बनाए गए थे देश भर में और जिनसे जिनके शिकार आप सब लोग हो उस ब्लॉक डेवलपमेंट ऑफिसर को सारा को सशक्त करके जनता के हाथ में कुछ नहीं रहा तो इसलिए पंडित जी ने एक कमेटी बनवाया 
बलवंत राय मेहता के जरिए और उसके से उन सिफारिशों के आधार पर उन्होंने एक मॉडल एक्ट तैयार किया क्यों एक मॉडल एक्ट क्योंकि पंचायतों को निर्माण करना वो राज्यों का की जिम्मेवारी थी तो उन्होंने कहा कि हम संविधान को नहीं बदलेंगे हम इतना ही करेंगे कि हम उनको बताएंगे सब राज्यों को कि कैसा पंचायत राज को गठित किया जाए और क्योंकि उस जमाने में मैं उन्नीस सौ और उन्नीस की बात कर रहा हूं और तकरीबन सारे राज्य के सरकार कांग्रेस के थे और पंडित जी कांग्रेस सरकार चले चलाते रहे दिल्ली में इसलिए हर जगह पंचायती राज का स्थापन हुआ सो so, पंडित जी डिसाइडेड दैट ही वुड क्रिएट अ मॉडल एक्ट वाई अ मॉडल एक्ट बिकॉज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से दैट पंचायत आर द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सो सिंस ही वॉज अ स्ट्रिक्ट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनलिस्ट he could only prepare a model act and present it to the state governments but in 1957 and 1962 virtually all state governments were with the congress and the central government was with the congress and the whole system was run by a giant whose word was the law and therefore panchayati raj got created but as a private enterprise of the prime minister there was no conviction that this should be done the result was ki jab ki unka dehant hua 27 mai 1964 ko to wahi ke wahi panchayati raj ka bhi dehant hua dheeme dheeme takriban har rajya mein jahan ki panchayat raj chalta tha usko chhod diya ya usko bigad diya bas bombay प्रोविंस एक था जहां की आज के दिन महाराष्ट्र और गुजरात है जहां की ये चलते रहा लेकिन अपने ही तरीके से बाकी समस्त भारतवर्ष में कोई पांच दस साल के अंदर आप देखते तो पंचायती राज का न नाम न निशान रहा सो विद इन अ फ्यू इयर्स ऑफ जवाहरलाल नेहरू पासिंग अवे दे वॉज almost no panchayati raj to be found anywhere in the country except in gandhi ji's province of gujarat and in maharashtra where it had been fairly firmly fixed so that is the situation that prevailed when rajiv gandhi came to power aur jab rajiv ji pradhan mantri bane to meri khush kismati rahi कि मुझको उनके साथ देश का दौरा करना पड़ा इट वॉज माई गुड फॉर्च्यून दट वेन राजीव गांधी बिकेम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया इट वॉज वन ऑफ माई ड्यूटीज टू ऑर्गेनाइज एंड अकम्पनी हिम ऑन हिज रूरल टूअर्स थ्रू आउट द कंट्री एंड वॉट राजीव सॉ इज वॉट मोहन गुरुस्वामी टोल्ड यू अबाउट जो राजीव ने देखा ग्रामीण इलाकों में बस वो ही था जो कि मोहन गुरुस्वामी अब दौरे कर कर देख कर आ रहे हैं कि जो सरकारी नौकर हैं वो ही उन्हीं के दबाव में सब चल रहा है और कि चुने हुए प्रतिनिधिगण जो हैं या तो वो हैं ही नहीं या हैं भी तो उनको अपना सर झुकाना पड़ रहा है और उनके घुटने टेकने पड़ते हैं जो सरकारी अफसर हैं उनके सामने और कि जो अभी इन्होंने बताया कि टीचर जो है या कोई डॉक्टर हो वो ही बनते हैं जिनके पास पक्का घर हो और बाकी सब अपनी झुग्गी झोंपड़ी में रहते हैं सो व्हाट हैज बीन डिस्क्राइब बाय मोहन गुरुस्वामी वॉज एग्जैक्टली व्हाट राजीव गांधी फाउंड in his extensive tours through rural parts of almost every state of india in fact for some strange reason the one state he did not go to was sikkim i don't know why he didn't go there but if you leave us out sikkim 
whether it was the mountains of Arunachal Pradesh or the delta areas of Andhra Pradesh or it was the Deccan Plateau or it was the coastal areas of Tamil Nadu or it was the deserts of Rajasthan or it was the hills of Himachal Pradesh. He went to every part of India. He did not confine himself to the capitals. He went out among the people and he spent endless hours just trying to ascertain from the people themselves what it is that they were lacking and what could be the means of handing it over to them. So, when he was in the world, he was in the world, and 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 he was in the world, जो ग्रामीण स्थान हो या रेगिस्तान की बात हो या पहाड़ों की बात हो कोई ऐसा ऐसा नुक्कड़ नहीं छोड़ा गया भारतवर्ष में जहां की भारत के प्रधानमंत्री ने खुद नहीं पहुंचा और अपने आंखों से गवाही की वही चीज जिसका जिक्र हमारे मित्र मोहन गुरु स्वामी जी ने अभी आपके सामने पेश किया लेकिन क्योंकि वो प्रधानमंत्री थे और मोहन गुरु स्वामी बहुत अफसोस की बात है प्रधानमंत्री नहीं है इसलिए राजीव कुछ कर सकते थे उसके बारे में सो वी वर वेरी फॉर्चुनेट दैट बिकॉज राजीव गांधी वाज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ही डिड नॉट लिमिट हिज एक्टिविटी टू ऑब्जर्विंग ही कुड आल्सो डू समथिंग अबाउट इट and it was in fact here in hyderabad and mention has been made of that at the nird that it became absolutely clear to him as to what needed to be done ittefaqan isi hyderabad mein nird mein jahan ki wo pahunche the aur main bhi unke sath tha unko achanak समझ में आ गया कि क्या करना चाहिए इस स्थिति को दुरुस्त करने के लिए और वो था द ओकेजन वाज द सेकंड मीटिंग ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट्स ऑफ इंडिया प्रधानमंत्री राजीव गांधी ने तय किया कि बजाय मेरे समझने का कि क्या गलत है और कैसे उसको सही कर सकते हैं मैं देश के समस्त डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट्स जिनका नाम अलग अलग है अलग अलग राज्यों में कहीं डिप्टी कमिश्नर कहते हैं कहीं कलेक्टर कहते हैं कहीं डिप्टी कमिश्नर कहते हैं लेकिन बिना एक को छोड़े इस देश के तकरीबन 600 इन अफसरान से वो मिले और जबकि वो मिलते थे तो घंटों उनके बीच में बिताते थे ही वुड स्पेंड आवर्स लिसनिंग टू वॉट दीज सिक्स हंड्रेड डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट हैव टू से एंड आफ्टर द फर्स्ट मीटिंग इन विच वॉज इन भोपाल इन डिसम्बर नाइनटीन एटी सेवन ही सेव यू नोटिस्ड हाउ ऑल द ब्राइट डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट्स वॉन्ट the opinion of the people to run their administration and all the idiots don't want it and want to be on their own rajiv ne mujhse pehle meeting ke baad jo ki december sun 1977 mein hua tha 87 mein hua tha bhopal mein unhone mujhe ek taraf le ja kar kaha ki aapne dekha hai kya कि जितने भी बुद्धिशाली डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट्स हैं वो सब कहते हैं कि जनता के प्रतिनिधियों से राय मशवरा करके हमने शासन को चलाया तो बेहतर होगा 
और जितने भी बुद्धू हैं वो सब कहते हैं कि हम पर छोड़ दीजिए हम अकेले कर सकते हैं ये जो अनपढ़ हैं इनसे हमारा क्या लेना देना लेकिन जहां की ये सवाल उठा था उनके मन में भोपाल में कोई तीन चार महीने बाद फरवरी अठासी में जब हम हैदराबाद पहुंचे और दूसरे डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट से हमारी यहां मीटिंग हुई तब उनके उनका मन स्पष्ट हो गया था कि हम सरकार को तब ही सला सकते हैं माटी के स्तर पर जबकि जनता के प्रतिनिधि हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं प्रशासन के साथ जुड़े हैं और दोनों को एक साथ मिलकर इस बैलगाड़ी को आगे ले जाना है कि न तो यहां के जो चुने हुए प्रतिनिधिगण हैं वो अकेले अपने आप और बिना कोई सहारा कुछ सही काम कर सकते हैं और नहीं कि कोई आईएएस का अफसर वहां डिस्ट्रिक्ट में पहुंचे और कहे कि मैं जानता हूं सब कुछ क्योंकि मैं पढ़ा लिखा हूं मैं सेंट स्टीवंस का हूं मैं कैम्ब्रिज का हूं और इसलिए मुझे क्या सीखने की जरूरत है इन अनपढ़ गदगद लोगों से तो दोनों की जरूरत है और दोनों को बैलगाड़ी में लगाएं तो तभी गाड़ी आगे बढ़ेगी इट इज ओनली इफ द ब्यूरोक्रेसी एट द ग्रास रूट कैन बी योक्ड टू द सेम कार्ड दैट दी पीपल्स रिप्रेजेंटेटिव आर अटेम्प्टिंग टू पुल दैट बिटवीन द टू ऑफ देम दे विल बी एबल टू अचीव वॉट नीड्स टू बी अचीव एंड देन ओवर द नेक्स्ट थ्री मीटिंग्स तीन और ऐसे मीटिंग्स हुए एक मणिपुर में इम्फाल में एक जयपुर में और एक कोयम्बतूर में तो मतलब पूरा देश पूरे देश में वो घूमे अपने डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट से मिले कभी कभी ऐसा हो जाता था कि हम मीटिंग में रात के तीन बजे पहुंचते थे रात के तीन बजे पहुंचते थे पूरा दिन यात्रा करने के पश्चात और उनको बस अपना मुंह धोने का था और कुछ नहीं पहुंच जाते थे और ऐसा काम बातचीत करते थे लोगों से जैसा कि सुबह का नौ बजे हो लोग बेचारे सोते सोते जवाब देते थे उनको और तीन बजे से लेकर छह बजे तक हमारी बहस होती थी और फिर आठ बजे को जनाब तैयार हैं कहने के लिए कि आज की यात्रा अब शुरू करें अब मुझे पता नहीं कहां से उनको इतना दम मिला और ये तो मैं जरूर नहीं बता सकता हूं कि मुझसे मुझको कहां से दम मिला उनके पीछे जाने का लेकिन वो थे हमारे बॉस तो इसलिए उनके कहने पर हम भी चलते थे यानी हाउ दीज मीटिंग गॉन एट ऑल आवर्स ऑफ द डे and i particularly remember a meeting in coimbatore after he had traveled through the whole of northern tamil nadu from the early morning till that till and done a rally in the middle of the night that after 12 o'clock he arrived at 3 am to meet these district magistrates and he stayed with them till 6 in the morning and then at 8 o'clock he was ready to start his day again लेकिन इसका नतीजा ये था कि उन्होंने एक किस्म का मंथन करवाया कि जो अच्छा पंचायती राज है उसका अनुभव उन्होंने मिलाया गलत पंचायत राज के साथ उनके मन में कोई ऐसी इच्छा नहीं थी कि कांग्रेस के राज्यों को बहुत अच्छा दिखाए और कि विपक्ष के राज्यों को बहुत बुरा देखा है खास तौर पर यहां आंध्र प्रदेश में जो एनटीआर साहब ने शुरू किया था उसको जाकर जांच करने के लिए वो खुद निकले और अपनी गाड़ी चलाते हुए उस जमाने का जो आंध्र प्रदेश था समस्त आंध्र प्रदेश वहां पूरे घूमे और जगह जगह पर रोककर लोगों से पूछते थे वहां के सरपंचों से पूछते थे 
और एक डिस्ट्रिक्ट डेवलपमेंट प्लान करते थे एनटीआर साहब उसको भी समझकर बंगाल में जहां की कम्युनिस्ट सरकार थी वहां बहुत अच्छा पंचायत राज चल रहा था तो वहां से भी समझकर लेकर उस सब का एक मंथन बनाकर और उसके बाद जो अमृत निकला वो ही अंत में जाकर पंचायत राज के संशोधन बने संविधान में सो वॉट राजीव यूज टू डू इज टू नॉट कंसिडर हु वॉज इन पावर इन विथ स्टेट हियर इन आंध्र प्रदेश he traveled around the place with ntr and ntr had attempted his own form of panchayati raj so he picked something from that he went all over bengal and whatever was available in that communist run state he accepted that he went to karnataka and was very impressed with what ramakrishna hegde who was deadly anti congress what was he doing and he had a man a uh, minister called abdul uh, nazir and he picked up everything he could from abdul nazir and he threw all these elements into having the kind of manthan which produced with the efforts of mohini the amrit in our traditions and what he produced was the amrit of panchayati raj and that was to say that panchayat raj will remain a state subject yahan ek sujhav diya gaya tha ki hum sthayi sarkar ko state list se nikal kar concurrent list mein dale taki hum panchayat raj ko badhava de लेकिन राजीव ने कहा नहीं क्योंकि वो नहीं चाहते थे कि केंद्र और राज्य के बीच में झगड़ा शुरू करवाए वो तो चाह रहे थे कि हमें स्थायी इकाइयों को सशक्त करना है और वो एकमात्र हमारा लक्ष्य रहना चाहिए और एकमात्र लक्ष्य रहने से ही कुछ करवा पाएंगे सो ही रूल्ड आउट any question of changing the constitution and don't forget that was the years of the sarkaria commission and they had come out in 1987 with their report on center state relations and the bombay judgment was about to come so he didn't want to take the focus away from the empowerment of the panchayats and shift it into the controversy over the center and the states at that time jaypal reddy was in the opposition us samay jaypal ji vipaksh ke neta the aur unhone badi mukhalifat ki ye jo panchayat raj ko lane ka prayas ho raha tha aur unka bas yahi kehna tha khaas taur par ki ye to ek raj ka vishay hai aap kendra mein baith kar kya kar rahe ho पी एम टू डी एम विदाउट सी एम ये था उनका उनका आलोचना अब इसमें कोई खास सच नहीं थी क्योंकि सी एम को बुलाते थे कहते थे कि आप भी आइए लेकिन अक्सर विपक्ष के सी एम खास तौर पर पहुंचते ही नहीं थे और वो बस लगे हुए थे बोफर्स की बात करने में शाबानों की बात करने में और क्योंकि उनको ये आंदोलन चलाना था उनके खिलाफ तो इस रचनात्मक काम में ऑपोजिशन के जो मुख्यमंत्री थे और ऑपोजिशन के जो मेंबर्स थे राज्यसभा में तो बहुत थे लोकसभा में कम थे लेकिन उनकी मुखालिफत रही ये हकीकत है इसलिए उन्होंने कहा कि हम ऐसा करेंगे कि पहले हम स्थापित करेंगे कि संविधान के जरिए पंचायत राज होना ही चाहिए कि पंचायतों के बिना आप रह नहीं सकते हो तो कि ये एक मर्जी नहीं रही राज्यों का 
ये उनका दायित्व बना और आज तक वो सबसे बड़ी उपलब्धि वही है कि आप जहां भी जाओ हमारे देश में आपको पंचायत राज की इकाइयां मिलते ही हैं सरपंच मिलते ही हैं और जो उन्होंने आरक्षण का इंतजाम किया था वो मुकम्मल तौर पर इस देश में चल रहा है किस हद तक कुछ आंकड़े में आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूं द ग्रेट थिंग अबाउट व्हाट राजीव डेड वाज टू मेक इट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली ऑब्लिगेटरी टू इंप्लीमेंट द डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी दैट यू मस्ट हैव पंचायत यू कैन गेट अवे फ्रॉम इट आई हैव ऑफन यूज द एक्सप्रेशन व्हिच आई कैन ट्रांसलेट इनटू हिंदी that he made panchayati raj ineluctable irreversible and irremovable you just had to have panchayati raj and till today that has been the big success of panchayati raj there's no way you can go in the country without finding panchayats and the officials concerned as also most importantly the reservation system that he thought up to answer dr ambedkar's point kya kya chamatkar zara samajh lijiye unhone kaha ki ha rajya ya desh ke star par 22 pratishat jo hamari janta hai wo scheduled caste se judi hui hai to bajaye ye kehne ka कि हर पंचायत में 22 प्रतिशत आरक्षण रहेगा उन्होंने कहा नहीं आप गांव में जाकर देखिए जहां की या उन गांवों में जाकर देखिए जहां की पंचायत स्थापित होने वाला है और वहां जो भी शेड्यूल कास्ट का हिस्सा हो तदनुसार आरक्षण होगा तो यदि गांव के स्तर पर 40 प्रतिशत एस हैं, तो 40 प्रतिशत आरक्षण होता है और यदि किसी और गांव में 10 प्रतिशत ही एस हैं, तो 10 प्रतिशत ही आरक्षण होता है नतीजा ये कि जबकि आप राज्य जबकि आप गांव के स्तर पर तालुका के स्तर पर या ब्लॉक के स्तर पर और फिर जिला के स्तर पर आरक्षण को कुल मिलाकर देखोगे तो 22 प्रतिशत ही आएगा लेकिन हर एक गांव में जहां की ज्यादा एससी लोग रहते हैं वहां उन्हीं का राज होगा और जहां की कई दूसरे लोगों का होता है ठीक है वहां दूसरों का होगा लेकिन इससे भी आगे उन्होंने महिला आरक्षण के लिए इंतजाम किया आज के दिन जब आप लोकसभा को देखें तो हालांकि हमारे देश की आबादी में 50 प्रतिशत या आधा आधी आबादी महिलाओं की है कितने महिलाएं हैं लोकसभा में शायद 8 आठ प्रतिशत आठ प्रतिशत महिलाएं और देश में 50 प्रतिशत महिलाएं हैं और उन्होंने कहा कि नहीं हमें उन्होंने शुरू किया एक तिहाई से फिर आगे बढ़ते बढ़ते अब पंद्रह राज्यों में पचास प्रतिशत हो चुका है आरक्षण सो महिलाएं जो निचले स्तर के हैं वो सब इन इकाइयों में आ चुके हैं और आप पूछेंगे कि कितने तो मैं कुछ आंकड़े आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूं देर आर ऑल टूगेदर about 250000 250000 ,00 village panchayats in india now to these 250000 panchayats we have elect and and then the urban local bodies we have elected a total of some 3.4 million ya 34 lakh representatives Let me translate that into Hindi. हमारे देश में तकरीबन 
دو ہزار نو ڈھائی لاکھ دو سو پچاس ہزار ڈھائی لاکھ گاؤں ہیں اور ہم نے چن کر نکالا ہے کوئی چونتیس لاکھ پرتنی گڑھ جو کہ ہمارے استھائی اکائیوں میں گرامین استر پر اور پھر اونچے کے استر پر چن کر نکالا ہے اب پہلے کیا تھا پرستھتی کہ کوئی پانچ سو لوگ تھے جو کہ چن کر جاتے تھے دلی اور کوئی چار ہزار پانچ سو تھے جو کہ چن کر جاتے تھے حیدرآباد اور انیا جو راج کے راجدھانیاں ہیں باقی بیٹھے رہو راجیو کی کرانتی اتنی تھی کہ جہاں کی پانچ ہزار لوگوں کا شاسن چلتا تھا دیش بھر میں کشمیر سے کنیا کو ملی تھا آج کے دن گاؤں میں چونتیس لاکھ پرتنیدھی گڑھ ہیں چونتیس لاکھ اور ان میں سے چودہ لاکھ مہیلائیں ہیں چودہ لاکھ مہیلائیں فورٹین لاکھ الیکٹڈ ویمن انڈیا ہیز مور الیکٹڈ ویمن دین ان دا ریسٹ آف دا ورلڈ پٹ ٹوگیدر غزب کی بات ہے کہ بھارت میں چنے ہوئے مہیلاؤں کی سنکھیا دنیا بھر کے چنے ہوئے مہیلاؤں سے زیادہ ہے اب تالیاں تو بج نہیں رہی ہیں لیکن میرا یہ کہنا ہے کہ مجھ کو یہاں آنے کی کیا ضرورت تھی آپ کو بتانے کے لیے آپ خود کیوں نہیں اس کو جانتے تھے ایک ہی کارن کہ یہ جو چودہ لاکھ مہیلاؤں کا میں ذکر کر رہا ہوں وہ سب غریب ہیں وہ سب بچھڑے جات کے ہیں وہ سب ایس سی ایس ٹی ہیں تو ہمارے ٹھیٹ میڈم جو کہ کانجی ورم ساڑی یہاں پہنتی ہیں وہ کہتے ہیں کہ ہمارے لیے کیا جگہ ہے کچھ نہیں ہے تو ان کو جو ہماری نوکرانیاں ہیں ان کو جگہ دے کر ہمیں کیا فائدہ اٹ از اے ٹریجڈی دیٹ دس گریٹ اچیومنٹ آف انڈیا انڈیپینڈنٹ انڈیا ایز اے ریزلٹ آف راجیو موو از سو لٹل نون اونلی بیکاز ویمن آف اے سرٹن اپر کلاس do not get adequate representation in parliament or the assemblies. So they dismiss what we have achieved for their servants and their servant sisters. And we have a very dirty system going on in Haryana and Rajasthan to prevent uneducated women from coming to the top, which is by laying down restrictions on the number of children they can have. If they had two children when they were elected and get a third child while they are in office, they immediately dismissed. If they haven't paid their electricity bills, they can't stand in the elections. If they have taken a loan from a bank and have not repaid it, they can't stand in the election. If they haven't passed such and such a class, they can't stand for a panchayat election. If they haven't passed such and such a class, they can't stand for a taluka election. If they haven't passed such and such a class, they can't stand for a district election. The result is that 85% of the women who were elected in Haryana before these rules came in, 85% of them did not qualify to stand in the next election. اور اس کا کیا نتیجہ ہے ذرا سن لیجئے اور سمجھ لیجئے اور اپنے آئی فونس کو ذرا چھوڑ دیجئے گا سنو یہ ایک انوکھی موقع ہے یہ مہیلاؤں کو دیکھتے ہوئے کہ ایسے ابھر کر آ رہی ہیں کہ ہماری نوکرانی بن رہی ہے سرپنچ جب کہ ہم یہاں بیٹھے ہیں گھر میں اپنے کانچی ورم ساری میں تو اس لیے ان دو راجیوں میں اور شروع ہوا تھا راجستان میں 
जहां की एक महिला चीफ मिनिस्टर थी वसुंधरा राजे कि ये कहो कि दो बच्चे से कम हो तो आप खड़ी हो सकती हो लेकिन जीतने के बाद आपका तीसरा बच्चा हो गया तो तब फौरन आपका डिसमिसल होगा ये कहते थे कि आपकी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल को आपने नहीं काटा तो तब आप खड़े नहीं हो सकते हो कि आपने ऋण लिया हो बैंक से और उसको वापस नहीं दिया हो तो तब आप खड़े नहीं हो सकते हो और जब तक कि आपने फलाने क्लास को नहीं पास किया आप पंचायतों में नहीं खड़े हो सकते हो फलाने क्लास नहीं पास किया तो आप तालुका पंचायत में नहीं खड़े हो सकते हो और फलाने क्लास को नहीं पास किया तो आप डिस्ट्रिक्ट पंचायत में नहीं आ सकते हो और इसका नतीजा ये था कि हरियाणा में पचासी प्रतिशत महिलाएं जो चुनकर आई थी इन नए नियमों के पहले वो खड़ी भी नहीं हो सकी दूसरे इलेक्शन में और ये सवाल नहीं पूछा गया कि क्यों आम जनता अनपढ़ गरीब औरत के लिए वोट डाल रही है जबकि इतने शानदार और बिल्कुल टॉप महिलाएं हैं गांव में जो कि चौधरी की बीबी हो या किसी रेड्डी की बीबी हो कारण बहुत सिंपल था वो देखते थे कि जो ऊंचे वर्ग की महिलाएं हैं वो चली जाती थी चंडीगढ़ या हैदराबाद या मद्रास और कभी कभी गांव में आती थी जहां की गरीब औरत वहीं की वहीं रहती थी क्योंकि उसके उसका तो उसके पास साधन नहीं थे कहीं और जाने के लिए तो आप सीधा उनके घर जा सकते थे कोई कुत्ता नहीं था बाहर भोंकने के लिए आप जाओ खटखट आओ और कहो महिला से कि मेरे घर में मेरे नलके में पानी नहीं आ रहा है और कल सुबह तक नहीं आया तो तुम्हें वोट नहीं मिलेगा कल अब किसकी हिम्मत होगी कि जो बहुत बड़ा लैंडलॉर्ड है उसके घर में जाए खटखटाए और महिला से कहे कि कल शाम तक मेरी नाली से सारा जो गंद है वो निकले नहीं तो तुम्हें वोट नहीं दूंगा तो यही कारण है कि गरीब गरीब के लिए वोट डाल रहा था और उनको कोई इतराज नहीं था कि वो गरीब महिला के लिए वोट डाले क्योंकि आखिर गरीब महिला को अपने जीवन कमाने के लिए उनको बाहर जाकर काम करना पड़ता है जहां की हमारे ऊंचे वर्ग के जो महिलाएं हैं वो घर बैठी रहती हैं या दुपट्टा को ऐसे करके निकलती हैं तो इसलिए वो, वो खड़ी नहीं होती थी और खड़ी हो गई तो कैसा चुनाव लड़े क्योंकि चुनाव लड़ना हो तो आपको जाना पड़ेगा किसी अनजान के दरवाजे पर खटखटाना होगा और वो आदमी आएगा अपने तहमत पहनते हुए कि हाँ तुम कौन हो और तुम कहो कि मेरा नाम रीटा है और मैं खड़ी हो रही हूं और आप उषा को वोट मत दीजिए मुझे दीजिए ये तो गरीब औरत कर सकती है अमीर औरत कर सकती है क्या तो एक क्रांति चल रही है हमारे ग्रामीण इलाकों में कि जो दबे हुए महिलाएं थे दबे हुए वर्गों को छोड़िए जो दबे हुए महिलाएं थे और वो भी सबसे दबे हुए थे दबे हुए वर्गों के वो आज उभर कर आ गई हैं और ये पदों को वो संभाल रही हैं और ये लोग क्या कहते हैं जो शहर में रहते हैं कि नहीं ये तो सरपंच राज चल रहा है कि पंचपति काम करता है तो मैं भी गया इसी के साथ जबकि मैं पंचायत मंत्री था दौरे करता था तो राजस्थान के गांव में एक महिला बहुत ही शानदार तरीके से जो भी सवाल मैं कर रहा था पंचायती राज के बारे में उनके गांव के हालत के बारे में बहुत ही सुंदर जवाब दे रही थी और अचानक एक सवाल के जवाब में एक आदमी उठा और उन्होंने इसके जानब से जवाब दिया तो मैं उसके तरफ देखा और मैंने कहा कि 
मैंने सवाल तो मैडम से किया है और तुम कौन हो जवाब देने का उनका शानदार जवाब आ रहा है तो मैं उन्हीं के बात सुनना चाहता हूं तो फिर मैं आगे बढ़ा और जबकि एक और सवाल किया दोबारा ही आदमी खड़ा हुआ तो मैंने कहा कि आखिर तुम हो कौन और सब लोग हंसने लगे कहा कि ये तो सरपंच के शौर हैं और इसलिए वो जवाब दे रहे हैं और फिर उस महिला ने मेरे तरफ घूम कर कहा और ये गांव की सरपंच है और मैं हूं केंद्रीय मंत्री उस जमाने में बहुत बहुत बड़ा आदमी हुआ करता था अब तो वो सब खत्म हो गया लेकिन उस जमाने में मैं केंद्रीय मंत्री था और ये लड़की एक गांव के सरपंच तो उन्होंने मुझसे कहा कि साहब मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि आपका क्या इतराज है हम दोनों की शादी पचास साल से हो चुकी है हमारे चार पांच बच्चे हैं उनका पालना उनका देखभाल करना हम दोनों ने एक साथ दिया और जो भी मुझको दिक्कत होती है जिंदगी में उसमें वो मेरे सहारे के लिए आते हैं और जो भी संकट में वो पड़ जाते हैं तो मैं अपने तरफ से उनकी उनको जरा उनकी हालत जरा सुधारने की कोशिश करते हूँ तो अब ये एक नया काम मुझको दिया गया है मैं तो पहले कभी सरपंच नहीं रही हूँ और मैंने अपने शोर से पूछा कुछ मदद के लिए तो आपको क्या इतराज है कि वो मुझे मदद करते हैं एंड आई वॉज अन एबल टू आंसर I know that in my life, I whenever I am down, it's my wife who pulls me up, and whenever I am floating too much in the air, it's my wife who pulls me down, brings me to reality. So if I need my wife, well, why shouldn't she need her husband? And why all this talk of sarpanch pati? It's all a way of denigrating women. so if you want gender equality the only way of doing it is this i know a scheduled caste woman in himachal pradesh in the district of uh, i forgot this name solan she has been continuously the village president for the last 25 years she was first elected when the post was reserved for women then she was elected when the post was reserved for dalits then she was elected when it was a general post and now she continues to be elected whatever is happening because she does a good job and it's not isolated i have met them all over the place in karnataka your neighboring state when in when i was minister that's why i got the details the scheduled caste women are entitled to 33% of the reserved seats but the actual result showed that 54% of the elected scheduled caste candidates were scheduled caste women and that the number of the percentage of scheduled tribe women who were elected was 63% why because these women work they are co-earners with their husbands they know how to go into the market they are they are the ones who have to demand ki nahi mujhko 100 rupees milna chahiye aapne mujhe 90 rupees diye hai they are the ones who sauda karte hain they are the ones who are not sitting at home they are out in the public space aur isliye वो उभर कर आई हैं आगे बढ़ गई हैं और इतना आगे बढ़ गई हैं कि हमारे देश के पंद्रह राज्यों में महिलाओं का आरक्षण पचास प्रतिशत बढ़ाया गया है और मैं उस दिन का इंतजार में हूं जबकि पार्लियामेंट इसको पचास परसेंट करे हर राज्य में क्यों नहीं आखिर आधा मानव जाति तो महिलाओं का है और उनको अपना सही स्थान देना यही तो न्याय बनता है और इनमें से ज्यादातर गरीब हों और निचले वर्गों के तो तब खुशी ही खुशी इसमें क्या शिकायत करने की जरूरत 
हमारा सबसे बड़ी उपलब्धि ये है कि हमारे देश में जो चुनकर हमने महिलाओं को निकाला है उनकी समस, उनकी संख्या समस्त विश्व में जो चुने हुए लड़कियां हैं महिलाएं हैं उनसे ज्यादा भारतवर्ष में अकेला है और इस तत्व को कोई नहीं जानता कोई नहीं मन की बात में बताता क्योंकि उनके मन में इस बात है या नहीं मैं नहीं जानता यही है दिक्कत कि जो हमारी उपलब्धियां हैं हम उनको नहीं बताते हम बस शिकायतों को बताते हैं और शिकायतों को बताना बहुत जरूरी है आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू से दैट वी मस्ट हाइड द डिफेक्ट्स पंचायती राज हैज अ लॉट ऑफ डिफेक्ट्स इट्स मेन डिफेक्ट इज दैट द मैन द वाइल द मैंडेटरी प्रोविजन दैट इज वॉट यू हैव टू डू जो मजबूरियां हैं हमारे संविधान में कि आपको पंचायतों को गठित करना ही चाहिए कि चुनाव करवाने ही चाहिए कि स्टेट फाइनेंस कमेटी होना ही चाहिए कि स्टेट इलेक्शन कमेटी होना ही चाहिए ये सब जो मजबूरियां हैं वो तो हमारे राज्यों ने पूरा स्वीकार कर लिया लेकिन बहुत से प्रावधान हैं जो कि सशक्तिकरण से जुड़े हुए हैं और वो मजबूर नहीं करता है वो सिफारिश देता है राज्यों को कि आप ये कीजिए वो कीजिए सो द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन आर रिकमेंडेटरी वॉट एवर इज मैंडेटरी इज हैपनिंग ऑल ओवर द कंट्री वॉट एवर इज रिकमेंडेटरी इज नॉट हैपनिंग जो भी मजबूरियां हैं उसको तो राज्य सरकारों ने चुन लिया है अपना लिया है लेकिन जो सिफारिशें हैं उनको वहीं के वहीं छोड़ दिया है तो इस परिस्थिति में आप क्या कर सकते हैं वॉट आर द स्टेप्स दैट यू कैन टेक टू एंश्योर दैट द मैंडेटरी प्रोविजन दैट द रिकमेंडेटरी प्रोविजन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आर गिवन द सेम स्टेटस एज द मैंडेटरी पास विल द आंसर इज वेरी सिंपल इट इज दैट ऑल स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स हैव इनेक्टेड कंफॉर्मिटी लेजिस्लेशन to the constitutional provisions and those are justiciable after all the state act on panchayati raj is common law you can challenge it a constitutional provision you have to show that there is a constitutional infirmity otherwise the supreme court won't take note of it but your high courts are there for you to say that the state government the state legislature has accepted all the 29 subjects that are illustratively mentioned in the constitution but made them a state obligation in the state legislation that there is a model for devolution that first you decide what are your panchayats going to do you don't have to start with 29 what are the six or seven functions that are going to be performed by the states by the panchayats that is the first f the functions the next f is the finances kaam karna ho to साधन की जरूरत है आप ये कह दें कि हाँ आप शिक्षा चलाइए गांव का शिक्षा लेकिन गांव के शिक्षा के लिए आपने पैसा नहीं दिया तो कैसे चलाएगा तो जो होता है जो फंक्शंस हैं उसके साथ फाइनेंस भी भेजने हैं और अधिकारी गण को भी भेजना है तीसरा एफ बनता है फंक्शनरीज जिसका मतलब है अधिकारी गण तो सबसे पहले you have the functions the finances and the functionaries tino ikatthe aa gaye to tabhi jaakar sarpanch kaam kar sakta hai aapne atak kar di usko diya ki ha ye aapka kaam hai karo lekin paise sab sarkari naukar ke sath rehte hain 
कि जो सरकारी नौकर है वो आपकी बात नहीं सुनता वो कहता है कि मंत्री बताया डिसफंक्शनल सो पंचायती राज हैज बीन मेड डिसफंक्शनल बाय द नॉन ऑब्जर्वेंस ऑफ द प्रोविजन ऑफ द स्टेट लॉ सो डोंट चेंज द पोजिशन ऑफ द पंचायत फ्रॉम द स्टेट लिस्ट टू द सेंट्रल लिस्ट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट लिस्ट If you try to do that, you are centralizing in the name of decentralization. But if you, if people like Professor Purushottam Reddy and NGOs are able to go to the Hyderabad High Court and say that this is what is written in the Andhra Pradesh law, and the reality is that it is not happening, and produce all these punches. these sarpanches as your witnesses how can a high court deny you likha hua hai kanun mein kanun ko banane wali hai telangana ki sarkar aur unhone usko lagu nahi kiya to un par shikayat lag sakta hai aur dand lagega court ke taraf se aur uske baad bhi unhone nahi kiya to tab aap court mein ja sakte ho keh sakte ho ki ye contempt of court hai अब मैंने सोचा था कि शायद केंद्र कर सकता है लेकिन केंद्र को किसी राज्य को हाई कोर्ट में ले जाना या सुप्रीम कोर्ट में ले जाना हमारे संविधान के अनुसार ये असंभव है तो आप ही जो सिविल सोसाइटी के लोग हैं या पंचायतों के लोग हैं सरपंचों का कोई संगठन हो तो उसके तरफ से आप कोर्ट में जा सकते हो और कह सकते हो कि कानून में ये लिखा है लेकिन हकीकत जमीन के स्तर पर ये है तो इसलिए आप कृपया सरकार को बताइए उनको मजबूर कीजिए कि जो कानून उन्होंने खुद बनाया है उसको अमल में लाना उन्हीं का काम है और जब तक कि वो नहीं लाते हैं तब तक कोर्ट के कंटेम्प्ट में है तब काम बन सकता है तो इस क्रांतिकारी काम मैं आप पर छोड़ रहा हूं आप चाहते हो तो मैं भी आपके साथ आ सकता हूं लेकिन कदम तो आपको उठाना होगा हम दिल्ली में बैठे तेलुगु ने जाने क्या कह सकते हैं कि गांव में क्या हो रहा है आप ही जानते हो आपको हमें बताने की जरूरत नहीं है आप ही अपना दस्तावेज दरख्वास्त तैयार कीजिए वकीलों की कोई कमी नहीं है वकीलों का जो राय मशवरा है वो ले लीजिए और उसके साथ पिटिशन तैयार करवाइए और सरकार जो भी रंग का हो टीआरएस का हो या कांग्रेस का हो या कम्युनिस्ट का हो उनको सीधा अदालत के सामने पेश कीजिए और कहिए कि ये उन्होंने खुद अपने कानून में अपना लिखा हुआ कानून में ये बताया है और ये नहीं कर रहे हैं तो इसको सही करने के लिए क्या किया जाए यहां आप इनकलाब जिंदाबाद कह सकते हो लेकिन किसी और पर छोड़ना कि और कोई आएगा कोई पुरुषोत्तम रेड्डी आएगा या कोई मोहन गुरु स्वामी आएगा चलता नहीं है आप ही लोगों को खुद कर इसलिए मैं आपके तरफ देखकर बोल रहा हूं ये आपके लिए संदेश है आप अपना संगठन बनाइए और आपको पता न हो कि कैसे बनाए तो बगल में जो कर्नाटक राज्य है वहां बहुत अच्छे संगठन बनाए गए हैं पंचायतों का केरल में भी बनाए गए हैं मेरे ख्याल में एक हद तक तमिलनाडु में भी है मैं नहीं जानता कि यहां है या नहीं और मैं नहीं जानता कि बंटवारा के बाद जबकि आंध्र प्रदेश को अलग किया गया तेलंगाना से कि कोई संस्थान तब हुआ होगा जो कि और उसकी क्या हालत है आज लेकिन क्योंकि ये आपके स्वार्थ से जुड़ा हुआ है क्योंकि आपको अपना काम करने के लिए छूट मिलना चाहिए तो ये कदम आप ही उठाइए और आपके साथ जुड़ने के लिए बहुत से एनजीओ होंगे बहुत से वकील होंगे जो मुफ्त में भी ये काम करने को तैयार होंगे और फिर हम देखें कि कौन इस क्रांति को रोक सकता है 
बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद नमस्कार जय हिंद I am sure our uh, uh, sarpanchus here will take necessary action. No conversation about democracy uh, can be conducted without mention of the ideological seeds Mahatma Gandhi has sown, or the constitutional provisions drafted by Baba Sahib Ambedkar. And the... okay, sir, there is somebody who wants to ask a question. as i was saying that no conversation about democracy will be conducted without mention of the ideological seeds of sown by the father of the nation and the constitutional provisions drafted by baba saheb ambedkar and the democratic institutions set up by pandit jawahar lal nehru thank you very much sir for all the information you have given especially your experiences with the, the late prime minister sri rajiv gandhi and the noble works he has done towards empowering the panchayat raj is really commendable and uh, it, it's it, it is really a quite a bit of information that we all need to know thank you and uh, there there is among us a lady sir talking about women empowerment ek mahila hai jo kamyab hai sashakt hai jo aapko ek choti si tohfa dena chahti hai so i invite uh, anuradha sarpanch from kolkulpalli village she has a small gift to offer to you sir so a big applause to anuradha for so they say that when there is darkness it's a small spark that rekindles us we are really thankful to our wonderful speakers who have filled in with so much information and knowledge today Mr. Narasimha Gowda Garu, so please come on to the right. Sir, he is the brother of Professor Shivaya Garu, who drafted the 73rd and 74th Amendments. Uh, so, yeah, you have described uh, Shivaya Garu as Guru of Guru Sanjali. Why? Also, there is one more person, sir, Professor Shankar Chatterjee from NIRD, the same place where the whole activity was centered. Shankar Chatterjee, please come. thank you thank you for so tell anything i believe like no. no one minute five minutes only one minute sir acha okay thank you uh, our manishankar sir uh, former uh, uh, minister and uh, gatherings because i have given just two minutes time earlier told me to, to speak two three minutes i will just speak the respect to the jaipal reddy sir who has a great personality because he fought yeah. those days with mukesh sambani mukesh sambani sir and uh, i will speak little bit telugu though my mother tongue bengali desa bhasha londu telugu lessa due to panchayat that i specially prepared sir told to speak but time is i understand panchayat there are lot of development thing telangana so uh, few statistics i will hand over if possible to give because the panchayat raj developed the mahatma gandhi nrgs jo 100 days work 
and Telangana, lot of persons have been benefited because last 30 years, Nenu Telangana, Pura district law visited the IPND. And so lastly, today is a very auspicious day, though 9th May, 7th May, there is a great personality, Telugu person born in uh, India, Sarvas telling many do not know, we do not highlight, uh, Sitarama Raju, Aluru Sitarama Raju, 26 years age, he fought for the democracy and he was killed by the British Air, correct? We should highlight this type of names because Iroju, we are enjoying democracy because of like Sitarama Raju, Alaru Raju. And lastly, sir, I visited 50 countries and Chinese people told Indian democracy is very good. I have written article, Chinese people told because China you cannot highlight. If you ask what is the Tibetan policy, they can mean, in Telugu, Odu Odu, Matladu Ledu, like that. So scared of the Chinese rule. Till now, few years back, deleted. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for giving the opportunity. Uh, this is uh, Professor Shankar Chatterjee, one of the leading professors on the subject of Panchayat Raj in India. Thank you, sir. And one, one more person, that is my friend uh, B.V. Subarao, who is an international consultant when it comes to environmental issues. And he has been working on the... Thank you so much, Professor Purushottam Redigaru, Manishankar Ayer Garu and Mohan Gurswami Garu. From my young days, I started my career at the age of 23 in Basta as a central government employee. And I was hearing only three things. We praise small farmer. Oh, and we promote corporate farming. I do not understand the logic and the Indian mindset. And small industry, self-employed industry. Today we are inviting with a red carpet the MNCs from anywhere in the world. We are repeating what has happened before the colonial period. And today we are talking on democracy that too on Panchayat Raj system, where we have 250,000 Panchayats, not Raj. We have created Panchayat and Havok in 250,000. And we are unable to sustain, at the same time, when we refer to Mahatma Gandhiji, the villagers are the backbone. We are removing one bone after the other from the back. So where is the country left? Today we are passing through an utter chaos, the country. Today we need to discuss on these issues and uh, really I am thankful for participating in this uh, your talk. One thing I could not understand, you said that state law, you have a state law where I can question the state. When the state itself amends the panchayats and the local government acts in the assembly, because it has the complete majority, where do we go? I think it is time to go for a wider debate on panchayat raj system. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. I forget. Yeah, please come. You know, I have I have visited Hyderabad several times. He is at the downstream of Hyderabad, this village, and they receive all the effluents, garbage, pollution, everything. You know, a whole river has been poisoned. Sir, this is not the only village. Now let us assume the entire Gram Panchayat Act is being implemented. Everything fine. Now, what is their fault? Why are they living in, under those conditions? Grama Sabha organized, passed several resolutions, nothing happens. They are at the very pitiable, they have lost their right to clean air, clean water, clean surroundings, in fact, livelihood. And their generations together, they are condemned to be there. 
So, Jay, Shankar, you just one minute you can. Andarke Namaskaram Sarva Lagida Namaskaram Andarke Manshankar Ayargarke Guru Swami Garke Purushottam Reddy Sargarke Madhi Yedlabad Gramam Gatkesar Mandal Madhi Ante Gata Rindavela Samasaram Kante Mundu Nunchi Tumbay Aar Nunchi Oka Nadi Pravayinche Jeeva Nadi Yedaita Unna Do Moosi Nadi A Jeeva Nadi Ni Gata Palakul Yan Kondi Pollution Control Board Valle Yan Kondi परिश्रमले एजामान ले आन कोण्डे ये मुगुर गल से से वो का नदी ने पार्ट जैसे नरो कालुष्यम जैसे नरो पूर्ति का रसायन आला तोटे अंटे का ढूँढना तो मतमो विकाराबाद लगे डो विकाराबाद लो पुट्टी ना मुसी नदी अनंत गिरी कुण्डल लो वाड़ा पेली कृष्णा लो गलु सुन्दे मल्ला आंध्रक बोत सुन्दे अंटे वो इकड़ जीव नदी ने नाचनम बट्टी चेचे कृष्णा लगेड़ा कलशित में ही पहन्दी दाने तागुनेरो सागुनेरो रिंडो वाड़ कुंटन रो प्रजलको नाटे ये डांग को होते काल लको चेत लको अवन्नी कुरुपल लगाई स्किन डिसीज गावड़म दर्गुतन्दी अधे विदंगा गतम लो इपुरु नील कोन कोन दावतुन गावटी सारवालो सुबरासर पुट्टोतमर Kalsi nak sahkan cincin gawatie, adi jiwana dini kalsi tam jeis cincro, dan kiyo report so ada arah la turut zubi cec se, atage nilanu musi paka guna nilanu drinking water nu thag kunda, kono kono filter nil wet kuda mana nadi, rende velo samat seram lagi da jari gendi, wasa wan ke, dini gida media metrolo, mana HM TV nu cik gida musi baca waya trajesi. Dan kerinci Ramchandra Murthy Saru, bil lantar gila, gila ijaz ada megane, ada jangga warta, bureau chief, garu, apadu, andar sah kerinci batke, ini nilan thagod dani prajal decide inro, kani ipudu, paspaksha dulu, awanne gila, totalga, ante pilche gali, ante thage niro, tine aharamu, mood bishamu, aharamu gali, ada bi jangga tindi, moodu Wishapur zaman yang adventi, anak anak itu memang tiada dalam jargon tuh ni. Kau nak dengan kita kita purti kesakaran ini sesi sesi, apadu, mudah anda lah, mupet tuh mesti court lah tuh di treatment plant lu betin ro, kani, gata, prabutamu, rasakan kerja dedikar prabutamu, nampu anda court lu beti treatment plant lu jesi ro, kani, kani severe treatment plant jesi ro, efflen treatment plant lu menggor te, paristamalan na adama ini cende. कंपनी एजमान लाना ना आदमाएं इन चंडी पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड वाला नहीं ना गाने प्रवृत्ति वाला आदमाएं इन चंडी मेरो ये मोड़ो दिन चाहिए कब होते मात्रा मो आ नदी आठने उन्टा द मेरे सेवरेज पेटमेंट सेवरेज ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट बैठे ना गाने अब इलान्टी पंजे एंड छपड़न जरगिंदी इप्पड़े सारवाल जब पिन रखा बटी पंचायत राज व्यवस्था ने नो का तट्टी नोची आईटी नवरक ने माजी सरपंच हो मेडिकल जिला रा मुम्मड़ रंगरे जिला लगेड़ा जनरल सेक्रेटरी सरपंच संगान की ने नुंडरण जरिये दी काने पंचायत राज व्यवस्था नो उकटे सर तमर के उका सारे विनाविन सुना नो ये असमले लो इपड़ प्रभुत तीसरे सिर्फ कोटा चट्टम दिस को न रावड़ा न की विलको हक्कु ये मना उन्ना दाना ने दे तमर द्वारा ने नोकट अड़गुतु नानो खाने दान इकड़ इज्जे चे चे इधि केंद्र प्रबुद्ध आने की राष्ट्र प्रबुद्ध आने की संबंध ना लूंडी चाहिए आल ना कोटा पंचायत राज चट्टमो लेकिन बोलते विले इस्तान सारंग सरपंच मैं में ये दो बागे इतना ना उनको नवंटा ने ना सरपंच का ने ना कहा ना आवेदन आ दी ने न गदम लो जेस ना काबटी पंचायत राज चट्टा ने दन कोटा पंचायत राज चट्टे ने जैसे सरपंच चल नाना इबंदल बैठे से ऐसे ग्राम वाला लल्ला इलान्टे द लेद काबटी दाने ये मन नहीं पढ़ मेरे जेपियन रो पिटिशन वेस्को � 
దాన్ని పోరాడే సత్తా అనేది మాకు ఉన్నది కాబట్టి ఉద్యమ స్ఫూర్తితోటి జీవించే హక్కు కోసం అనేది మేము పోరాడతామని చెప్పేసేసి తమరికి విన్నవిస్తూ ముగిస్తున్నాను translation a little bit so basically it has become impossible for the people living in the most polluted area <coughs> downstream of mosi because they have lost their third generation rights right to clean air clean water clean surroundings and the biggest tragedy is sir because when the 73rd and 74th amendments were enacted the concept of sustainable development goals was not there today it is a globally accepted thing india is a signatory to the global pacts now to organize development on a sustainable basis we need to empower the gram panchayats in the real sense suddenly we, you know overnight some industry comes up there is no public hearing people are simply suppressed everybody is purchased uh, you know local leaders and everybody supports the industry and what happens we have a very big uh, group which has come uh, from chitanur unun sir another point last point we have a respected uh, editor of a very famous uh, journal uh, magazine and i request professor sri ramchandra murthy garu please okka nimisham itla kalishpon na ఓకే సార్ తర్వాత ప్లీజ్ కోసం రన్న విత్ డ్యూ రెస్పెక్ట్స్ టు హీస్ అన్ యాక్టివిస్ట్ ఎడిటర్ సార్ ఆల్వేస్ విత్ ద పీపుల్ అండ్ ఎనదర్ పాయింట్ ఎనదర్ పాయింట్ ఈజ్ ఎస్ వి రియలీ సిన్సియర్లీ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ ఫర్ సజెస్టింగ్ ఎస్ వీ నీడ్ టు నాక్ ద డోర్స్ ఆఫ్ కోర్ట్ కంపల్సరీ వీ హ్యావ్ టు గో టు ద కోర్ట్ బికాస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అవర్ రైట్ right to development we can't compromise on the future of the coming generations in the in the villages uh, that point is very well taken and definitely uh, we have lot of activists here but the point is in the days to come what i feel as a social scientist because i always considered society as my lab i feel that we may, we have fought more than a, we have filed more than 100 cases we won about 90 and believe me sir we got orders from 40 orders from the supreme court but our chief just chief secretary thinks he is above the law there is no compliance 293 pending cases contempt cases against the chief secretary nothing happens now we have, the, the biggest question is who is who is committing the contempt of court is not the supreme court party to it they give a judgment and they don't bother to ensure its compliance why can't they create a mechanism and uh, ensure it so these are all uh, major issues some other day we request you to please come again we'll have a much larger debate on this with more uh, gram panchayat sarpanches and uh, now i request uh, sirish to please take over so talking about environmental issues uh, we uh, have a small uh, gift that we want to offer to you sir there is a book written uh, by dr k tulsi reddy dr sai bhaskar reddy and uma maheshwar reddy the title of the book is tulsi rao sorry it's a small correction dr k tulsi rao dr k sai bhaskar reddy and mr uma maheshwar reddy so the title of the book is eastern guards the outlook so i request shrimati leela lakshman reddy to come on to the dais so that she can gift these books to our uh, to our uh, eminent speakers here this is a status report on the finally sir uh, this is a autobiography of a very veteran congress leader shri vb rajgaru so i request uh, professor reddy to uh, give these autobiographies to our guests and incidentally my friend is the grandson of vb rajgaru 
I invite uh, Mr. Arvind Reddy Garu onto the dais so that uh, he is a very key member of S. J. Paul Reddy Memorial Foundation. So is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, you may please uh, ask a question. So, I will read out this uh, short letter, sir. It says, Respected Sir, Namaste. Even though there is fraud, still it is there. Bigger common families, no such worst election schemes. People before 2000 are much more happier than today. What is the main reason? This is from Lion M. Ramanuja Charyulu, uh, district, past ex-district governor and national best teacher awardee. So I would uh, interpret it, even though there is fraud, still it is there. So bigger common families, no such worst election schemes, people before 2000 are much more happier. <laughs> yes, sir. I got it. So, uh, Mr. Ramaruja Charyulu wants to ask that prior to 2000, year 2000, people were happy even though there are not many big schemes. But now there are many schemes, but, but people are not happy. Is that the question? Yes, sir. Correct. Worst schemes, that too. Okay. So you are much concerned about the quality of schemes as on today. Okay. So, oh, this is an allusion to the freebies that are being given away by... Uh, by I think I can answer that question in one sentence. Before 2000, you had Congress governments. After 2000, you don't. So this is the whole basic problem. So that's a very witty question, witty answer. Anybody wants to ask any more questions, please? Yes, please. through which we have been beaming in this COVID time also, Purushottam Redigar is my guru and Subharavar Guru Tulilu. We have gone for even seven and a half hours live, it's when the ruling party almost lost GHMC and then the other. Uh, a small, uh, this thing here, the Kanjivarapu Sari story, I wanted to put it in a different way. We have uh, Srimati Leela uh, Lakshmaridi, who has been doing a very good job Though she comes from that Khajivaram, <laughs> this thing, that is, that is one thing. So, she has been an inspiration for many. And the other aspect uh, which I wanted to put it across because yes, Jaipal Reddy, our memorial foundation through, when I was in Dakkan Post, I give credit to my then editor, Sridhar Goka. He is also one of the finest advocates we have. I had an opportunity to interview yes, Jaipal Reddy Garu. I interviewed him when he was petroleum minister. After that interview, when he made some candid observations, he was shifted out of that portfolio. The next day when I called him, he was trying to reminisce and he was trying to put so many things into my mind. This I just wanted to convey because I never had an opportunity how forthright he was. And uh, he is clearly said, natural resources belong to every citizen. Come whatever may, I will try to speak whatever you want. And we went, we made it a point to get that printed in the very, uh, what should I say, we carried headlines in our Duck and Post paper. So these two things I thought I'll just relate it. So that 
the entire panchayat what you are trying to say here they bought an amendment through assembly and they are not allowing these elected panchayat sarpanches mptcs zptcs function in a free or what should i say in a transparent and accountable way they are not allowing them until and unless you heed to the ruling uh, party which is in power this entire exercise of rajiv gandhi ji may become null and void so do you think in this circumstances going to high court with amendments in the assembly will have any effect on this first i'd like to say that i think jaypal's highest moment highest moment was when he allowed himself to be thrown out of the petroleum ministry on a matter of principle he was my successor as minister of petroleum not my immediate successor but i had been minister and he came in then and i really think he was a man of principle and it was very very good that he objected on the grounds that he did and it was very very wrong the decision taken then and i think it was decisions like that that have resulted in the congress party today having only 50 seats in the house these are wrong decisions and people like jaypal are required to prevent wrong decisions from being repeated the other point that you made what do we do about about uh, the legislature overturning provisions of the law well there's nothing you can do about it our democracy rests on three principles the um, the legislature the executive and the judiciary and if they don't remain apart one from the other then there are going to be problems but when you have an existing law then i think it is legitimate to raise this before the judiciary now if the judiciary does not act then i'm afraid democracy has come to an end you can't have panchayati raj functioning and the supreme court of india not functioning Uh, the excuse given is that we don't have enough judges that we have too many cases and too little time to handle it but this is not this is for them to sort out but the fact is that ever since the constitution was promulgated there has been an attempt by the center by the executive to somehow interfere in both the legislature's business and in the judiciary's business but it has never been as bad as it is now and uh, in these circumstances i can only weep for democracy but i don't think the answer lies in shooting dead the supreme court justice no that is not the way we have to elect the right people and if you feel you have elected the wrong people there's an opportunity going to come to you in a year or two to elect the right pe- people and in my personal view the right people are those whose party begins with the c that's it thank you sir what began as a lecture session had turned really interactive several uh, questions were discussed today so uh, it's time that we thank our uh, expert speakers shri manishankar ayer garu thank you for all the information that you have shared with us and uh, mr mohan guruswami garu for two reasons one is for all the empirical and academical knowledge you share with us and also providing this facility to conduct this interaction interactive session <laughs> dr reddy has always been a pillar of strength to s jaypal reddy memorial foundation he was always there when these programs were conducted during the successive waves of corona these uh, programs were talk shows were conducted over webinar and he was a regular participant and he is continuing his support to the foundation still and i also thank ladies and gentlemen who have made who have come here despite the hot sun and who have made this program a grand success and i know that there are many people who have joined us 
on the YouTube uh, live stream. And I thank you all for gluing to your devices and listening to all these conversations with rapt attention. And I should also thank the press people who have come here to take a comprehensive coverage of the program. I am sure there will be good reports of this program tomorrow. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time uh, that we conclude this session, this lecture session on democracy and decentralization. Yeah. Yeah, so in the IPO, sir, they want to have a personal conversation with you for some time. All these sarpanchas who have come with their. Yeah. Okay. So can we do it then? Huh? Okay, I'll leave, leave the forum open. Here is the mic, and anybody wants to share your opinions and viewpoints over the subject, you are welcome. Sir, good evening, sir. Sir, I have, uh, sir, I have one question, sir. Sir, nowadays contesting elections has become very costly affair, sir.